All right, just wanted to do a quick follow-up video on the um, on the Revolution SSG bike. So in the last video, um, which it was about this image, no, this bike, just to show you. Hopefully, uh, just actually, it would be best if you ended up going back if you are seeing the video on the next the next step to it. Um, just go back and watch that video. I think it's like seven or eight minutes, maybe ten max. Um, but it will help you understand more about how um, it originally started and the function of the system. Um, so this is a much more rough drawing than that. I actually took a lot of time to draw that. But uh, I wanted to share a few of these thoughts. In this one, I had mentioned right here the, um, I guess the pedal uh, sprocket. Um, it would be ideal to have the Bedini motors there as well because there's a lot of torque that needs to be, uh, you know, if you're going up a hill, you don't want to have additional torque. So this would help create um, an easier range of motion with, um, with you know, hard, hard thing to go against. But still, um, so if you do it in this angle where the magnets are slightly sticking out and the Bedini motors are pointing uh, in or whatever angle they require to be um, and there is always the frame that would normally be there and it could hold these in place with a cross brace um, sorry I didn't put that in before and it still operates in the same firing sequence as the last one where um, only one at a time is actually hitting um, one of the uh, the coils so um, it would be best if the magnets are actually adjustable within this somehow um, I'm sure I'll come up with that idea too uh, might even be related to the the next idea this has so what I wanted to do is I wanted to create um, a way to actually take any present wheel or rim and slap on um, a piece of plastic that would wrap around the frame um, of the wheel. So if you have a, a cross support, maybe uh, just several pins, and if this was made out of something like an ABS or something that reacted the same way, um, it'd be awesome if we could do acrylic, it would look really nice. Um, but this would um, help create a, a joint and a, um, a way to, you know, to have more structure held in place. Um, and then there's a clip around it, around the whole thing, that uh, that holds it uh, down. So if you were to um, have a point here where it's holding it, and a point here, so basically we would probably ask people to send us off their rim, and we'd have to um, take a, a mold of it would probably be best, and we could build the the clips right into it. Um, I think that would be probably the best idea. But uh, so. People would probably want to get this done in the winter time uh, and sort of plan for the the spring, or if you're in a hot climate, you could do it at any time um, you want. Um, so inside here um, is where the um, the magnets will be pointing. I believe it would be outward. Yes, outward, and they will be held in by um, by an encasement. So um, this would be the thread. That would be the thread. This would be the neodymium uh, magnet, and sorry for being on that angle. Here would be a, a type of some sort of epoxy. Um, I put cement epoxy. Um, I have a whole bunch of uh, well, I don't have a whole bunch, but I have one type that is should be perfect for doing this, and it'll hold it in place. And uh, a little bit of epoxy could be put here and here to help cushion and also prevent um, any uh, any vibration. So um, that would lock it in place really well. And the same, I guess, could probably apply for this. So you would probably want to send us off. You could send us your sprocket here, and we would be able to take the sprocket and modify it so that way it held um, plastic casing that would probably be similar to this, um, some sort of a bolt-in, um, you know, self-clipping and easy to attach. So um, it would fit through the spokes. I drew these for spokes, so it would just fit in between each spoke, and uh, then it would come. Uh, so this would look a little bit different than what it looks like now. Um, I was thinking for a first prototype, it might be cool to try a uh, 
uh, 3D printer. If someone knows how to do CAD and 3D printer, um, please feel free to join in on the project. The spokes would have a, a tube actually put on them with a seam uh, down the middle so that way you could fit it over the spoke and it would push from the center to the outside and as long as you didn't have it so it was too much it could help um, push this um, push the I guess, you, I guess we could call it a clip uh, the battery clip or the rotor clip yeah um, well whatever um, but it would uh, it would thread uh, it would have a thread on it and you would slip it on over here and thread it up and then you would slip another thread on down there or um, uh, a thin piece that would have uh, another thread on it so you would just back it up uh, to the top here and that would bring it to the same distance as it would be from here to here and um, then you just uh, glue the uh, um, the seam on this one first uh, actually sorry you would glue the seam on both of them first um, just by separating it with a screwdriver uh, wait for that to weld and then screw this piece into this piece and it should push uh, against here and have it so you figure out where you want to bring it back it off about four or five turns uh, full turns and then um, put the cement on the thread in which it reached to, down to you know just before um, when you brought it down to the length that you needed it, it would, um, if you were to take this threaded rod, you could take the, um, and, and back it up onto the, um, up against the, um, I guess, well, the clip. It would allow for you to put a little bit of pressure on that, but, so you'd find pretty close to where you would want, you wouldn't want to put too much because you wouldn't want to throw the wheel out of balance. Um, there could be less of these, um, you know, maybe it only would require six um, evenly spaced to, to create that extra support. Um, another idea is to do it in three pieces rather than two, um, like I've shown here. And there would be, up here, there would be um, uh, a piece that would sort of push them apart a little bit. So that, um, just a, a threaded, another threaded rod. Um, maybe two and if they're both on each side then hopefully that'll be alright for balancing um, so basically now this is just a bolt-on kit uh, you don't have to do any welding um, if this actually works where all you gotta do is just give it a little push so you push your leg off and everything starts turning well I almost guarantee that um, we can just have a, a type of clip um, with a slip down uh, hinge so it would slip over top of the uh, the hinge and it would hold it in place and I would also want to have a, a set pin uh, put in across so that way it, it holds it a little bit better um, might have to make it a bit thicker um, so we might have to modify their pedals but pedals are already big oh yeah well we, we would have to modify the pedals would use our own pedals um, and um, whatever this is called. Um, I don't know what this is called. Um, the pedal arm maybe. Um, so yeah, um, you could just have it so this any bike could just turn into any you know type of uh, electric bike and um, I also show in this design where it's on the front as well and I think that even though you're gonna be weighing your ve your not vehicle but your bike down um, I think that with all these modifications, and considering as most of the weight is on the wheel, um, you know, besides the extra coils and and hope he, hopefully super capacitors, um, it would be a, amazing to get some ultra capacitors for this, like some Grafni. Um, it would be awesome for this project. Um, would really prove uh, how Grafni can actually be used as a awesome source of uh, energy storage. I think with all this um, I might have some more advancements. Um, please check out my first video if you haven't seen it um, which will probably be part one and uh, check out my uh, anti-gravity motor. That thing's pretty cool as well. Um, I'm gonna keep sharing ideas. I'm doing a video also on uh, HHO cells that I've designed. Um, I've lost, uh, well, I dropped my hard drive and I've lost a lot of designs that way. 
Um, i had done a bunch on SketchUp, but if it were to have all of these coils, so that's uh, 6, 12, and, and 15, that should create a lot of force. And if the Bedini motor is as efficient as, efficient as everyone says, then um, I don't see why... Uh, why we couldn't use this as a mode of transportation like just imagine everybody having these things on their on their vehicles and they can commute to work on a bicycle and during the summer or if you live in a warm climate um, and never have to charge it you could go across town um, I actually believe that this thing will need to have a um, uh, a way to keep it from um, over uh, doing too much speed I think that uh, with all this I can actually make it so we don't need as much and I think that the key to that is actually held in this so um, I would probably want to also alter the way how the bike most uh, speed bikes work and have it so it operates like a um, well the, it works with the three ones so maybe it'll work with that as well yeah um, I guess keep that on but make sure that it's locked um, make sure that it's locked when it goes around so that way this always spins no matter what. So if um, this all works out we can have a really awesome mode of transportation and uh, it's all open source. Um, I don't know what the what the legality of it is because with uh, I was saying I'm going to use uh, John Bedini's circuit to do that but I think with all these modifications there's more than 8% difference within his system and a few other modifications for it so um, what I would prefer is John Bedini's uh, blessing um, you know I, I, I love his work and uh, I love the fact that he studied Tesla and he's done a lot of things that I, I, I hope to one day do. But um, in the meantime, I would like to start creating uh, other ideas. Um, here's another little idea. I don't know how this would operate, but um, if you were to take uh, make a core in this design, um, make these attachable e-cores to one surrounding core, and... Um, have it so you have it charged like Ed Langstrom, I forget his name, um, Leakston. I believe if you actually oscillate these all together so they all ring in the same resonance, and then you bring um, these to the same resonance as these ones are, I believe that it will create some sort of new way of generating electricity. I don't know exactly how it will operate. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, that's another little electric motor idea. I might as well get two in while I'm doing one. So, the, the brakes on the old, um, system won't work anymore. So, you're going to actually need to, <clears throat> you're going to need to, uh, to replace it with a disc brake. And, uh, if you decide to put it on the front part as well, you're also going to have to put a disc brake uh, there as well because the normal squeezing pad that's at the top would be uh, would no longer be able to work um, unless the the wheel um, unless we actually have the rims custom made and then we could have it so there's still a rail for the uh, for the um, for the brake to to ride on so. I think that is just about it. Um, this bike, I hope one day drives.